So we are live. Um, okay, so I will be bilingual because our audience is both Russian, Ukrainian and English speaking. So um, everybody who are joining make uh, get a little bit ready, get some coffee because it will be um, about an hour session with interview with some interesting games um, and information about item conference and our plans for 2016. So get ready, come together, join our session and we will start. Um, сейчас немного расскажу больше о конференции на русском языке. Сегодня uh, мы презентуем конференцию от лица нашего uh, топ-спикера uh, Юргена Апелла, uh, который uh, даст нам серию своих uh, уникальных ответов о своей карьере, о своих достижениях, о своих практиках и опыте в сфере agile. Модерировать интервью будет Тимофей Евграшин, уважаемый член нашего программного комитета ITEM, который поддерживает нашу конференцию с самого начала, с самого первого нашего года, 2013-го. Тимофей является идеологом Agile в Украине, консультантом, тренером и Agile коучем. Он нас консультирует и о составе спикеров, и о программе конференции. И сегодня будет задавать всевозможные разные интересные вопросы нашему спикеру Юргену. Немного сориентирую вас в целом о конференции, о наших планах на этот год. В 2016 году мы планируем масштабировать наши мероприятия до пяти потоков. Мы хотим охватить в этом году не только бизнес-оунеров и project management в IT-индустрии, но также осветить интересные темы о трендах в IT-индустрии и по направлению маркетинга и продаж, по направлению самых последних технологий, которые используются в software разработке И также нашим уникальным потоком в этом году будет поток «География IT-индустрии», где мы планируем осветить в сравнении с Украиной развитие особенностей и э, направление, в котором двигается IT в других странах, э, с спикерами которых будет представлена наша конференция. Э, в этом году основными днями конференции будет 2 и 3 июня. 2 июня это будет бизнес-поток э, и поток география в IT. Э, 3 июня это будет три основных потока для э, project менеджеров для sales и маркетинг, и для тех, кто интересуется трендами в технологиях. Также, как бонус для всех участников конференции ITEM, мы предлагаем посетить 1 июня предконференц-день для посещения воркшопов и практических тренингов от наших спикеров. Также по направлению маркетинга, по направлению Agile Project Management и по направлению психологических особенностей People Management в IT. Предлагаю в этом году также особое внимание уделить тому, что мы масштабируемся не только в Днепропетровске, но во всей Украине. В этом, если в прошлом году около 40% нашей аудитории были участники из других городов, таких как Киев, Одесса, Харьков, Львов, Запорожье, в этом году в связи с тем, что интереса все больше и больше из других городов, мы также планируем разместить всех интересующихся эволюцией IT из Украины. И потому мы будем проводить наше мероприятие в бизнес-центре Минора, которое вмещает более тысячи человек. Так что мы рады всем, кто захочет приехать к нам. Мы готовы предоставить помощь в размещении в Днепропетровске с нашими партнерами в гостиницах в районе бизнес-центра Минора. Также... 
прежде чем мы начнем интервью, я советую всем, кто уже к нам присоединился, налил кофе и готовы слушать, быть с нами до конца нашей сессии, так как в конце будут разыгрываться скидки на участие в конференции ITEM. Для этого вам нужно будет поучаствовать в интервью, задавать как можно больше вопросов. И самые интересные вопросы будут отобраны для того, чтобы они были озвучены и отвечены в лайв-режиме Тимофеем и Юргеном. Ну что, я передаю слово Юргену и Тимофею. Добро пожаловать, так сказать, в пространство конференции Айтон. Желаю вам удачи. So, hello. Hello, everyone. Um, and I'm really glad to reintroduce again our speaker and uh, personally saying I know Jürgen for quite some long. I think it was 2009 when we met first time, right? It was uh, Agile. Possible, yes. Yeah, yeah. Agile Eastern Europe or some uh, conference and actually first time uh, we've seen Jürgen, uh, we recognized you just as a brilliant speaker. So at that time uh, we didn't know you as a book after we didn't know you as a person who changed the world but at least we know you speak very well and your presentation was wonderful from all aspects because I'm a big fan of the public speaking and your presentations were both visually good uh, message delivery so it, it was great and then at uh, Uh, we met many times actually after this, but in 2010 you released this book, the very first book, uh, Management 3.0, and many people know you actually because of this book, and I'm sure in Ukraine there's a lot of copies, at least electronic copies of your book, and um, um, just if you look back a little bit, uh, what caused uh, you to write the book about management? Because uh, you were a good public speaker, you were a good manager, I still know guys from your company you worked at <laughs> some long time ago, and uh, then you decided to write a book, and actually I understand it required to commit yourself uh, for the whole year or more to just do only book writing. So what triggered you to look into the management from a different point of view? Well, I was uh, uh, I was a manager at that company that you were referred to, uh, uh, Tim, um, and um, I I always wanted to write a book. I love books, and my one of my goals in life was to was to be a writer. I just didn't know exactly what I wanted to write about. Maybe novels, maybe about science. Um, and uh, but at the same time, I also started a blog, uh, noop.nl. Some of you might uh, might know that. And uh, and at the beginning of the blog, the the, the second blog post in, in 2008, I said I want to write a book, but uh, I want to do it in small iteration. So I will start with a blog. And um, and uh, my original idea was to write about computer science and complexity science and stuff. But when I was uh, when I got started with my blog and I wrote about the stuff that I was doing at my company, being a manager, I noticed that that was what people were most interested in. Um, so uh, whenever I wrote about my struggles as a manager and introducing ideas in the organization as a manager. That was what uh, got people's interest. So it was the, the, the feedback cycle that I had through my blog that made me discover that I should write a book about management because this is what people in, in, in the software world uh, apparently were struggling with. Um, so uh, it is something that I discovered. I never had a plan to be a management expert or something. Uh, I had a plan to write a book. But the book that I wrote was the book that the audience wanted to read, which was a book about management. And uh, I, um, I think I, I did a, a, a decent job because the book sold a lot of copies. Yeah, definitely this book uh, got success. And uh, uh, what I uh, understand, so first uh, you... I remember one of your talks, you said, I'm not writing a book about new ways of management, actually. It wasn't uh, possible uh, to create something really new, especially if you are not uh, 
um, doing this, uh, I mean, like studying scientifically or something like this. So you wrote something which was trending, and it's really amazing that you caught the trend. And uh, um, actually, uh, when did you recognize that your ideas, your ideas you're spreading in this book and in your blog, they become, um, they got a Friction, a fraction, so they become popular. So when did you recognize that uh, the people uh, like the ideas, they're using them, and so on? Well, I I noticed that through uh, speaking at conferences. Uh, as you said, we met each other at several events, uh, even uh, while and before I was uh, writing the book, uh, when it wasn't published yet. I always I was already traveling uh, to conferences and doing speeches. To get to know people, but also because I like speaking and traveling uh, around the world, uh, talking with people about my favorite topics. And, and then I noticed that uh, when I talked about the management practices, that this was this got people's interest. And um, and what you say, it's true. It is not like I invented something new. Human beings have already been there for hundreds of thousands of years. And we have already had to organize things together for a long, long time. Um, the only thing that has changed in the last uh, the decade or more is the, the, the acceleration, the pace at which business is evolving. Um, and, and that has put even more pressure on the way we organize uh, uh, our companies. So there have been great companies uh, uh, for a long time al already, but the need to become a great company is much, much bigger now than it was in, in the past. Because in the past, things were relatively stable, didn't, things didn't change that much, but now things change all the time. Look at how fast companies such as BlackBerry and Nokia grew big and then got destroyed again. That's like within 10 years or something. So the need to have a great organization where people love to work, where they don't leave uh, to other companies, etc., that is much bigger now, and that requires better management. Yeah, that actually uh, leads to my next question, because uh, you in your book, in the Management 3.0, the first book, let's say, the first book, because you have many now, and uh, you mentioned it that it's about agile managers, and uh, often you relate it to the agile uh, audience, agile uh, community, but how do you feel and think, are the ideas you started uh, Preaching are they only uh, for the IT and software development and agile community as it started from IT, or are they bigger and they apply uh, applicable for the big audience of companies? How do you well, think? I, I, I am totally convinced that the ideas are for all businesses that uh, are that need to be creative with their product. Services. So that's new book, uh, Managing for Happiness, uh, which will be out in June. Pay attention to that. Um, I made sure that there is that there are almost no references to software or IT in the book. It is all about creative organizations and 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 uh, uh, creative, innovative people. How to manage those? Um, uh, it is true that I have only worked at software companies. Uh, but I meet people in other industries, like, for example, the car industry has invited me last year for a keynote in, in Germany at a car uh, industry event. Um, I've been speaking with librarians and, and, and other kinds of people who are originally from other uh, industries, but their industries are being changed as well because of software because software is getting into everything uh, and PARs are now software products on wheels basically. Um, so the car industry on, on the management side is still very traditional, it's still very very hierarchical and, and, and conservative, but they are very interested uh, to know how the software industry is doing uh, and, and changing the way they do management because Lots of things started in software, and uh, my my hypothesis, my the the idea that I have is that's, that's because software is infinitely malleable, changeable. 
you can change it all the time. We know that as software developers, customers, customers ask software developers to change things the, the day before the deadline, and it is even possible. You cannot do that with a, with a manufactured uh, uh, machine. Um, so the need to change things fast, uh, that started first in, in, in software development. So we needed to change the way we do management. I call it agile management or management 3.0. But now other industries are facing the same problems. The car industry needs to be able to change their car designs at the last moment, and they need to be able to, to change production cycles at the last moment. Uh, they have never had such problems uh, before in the past. Uh, well, Toyota has solved it from a very different angle with Lean, the Toyota production system, coming to exactly the same conclusions as, as software uh, companies had with, with Agile. So it sort of all comes together. But uh, there are plenty of other industries. Um, the fashion industry is a famous uh, example with uh, Zara and, and, and H&M, for example. They have discovered how to innovate faster, have multiple uh, 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 new uh, lines of clothes uh, uh, throughout the year, not just one time or two times, no, once per month. <laughs> that is what people want now. Um, so uh, they are innovating faster and faster. So they also need uh, uh, management that enables faster change. Yeah, so that's amazing because what you are talking reference to ideas um uh, I, I'm spreading a bit, and uh, maybe you know that uh, there was an article called it Third Wave of Agile, so maybe our uh, listeners can just Google it, and the whole idea of this wave is that when uh, some movement starts, and uh, then of course it, the wave ends when it becomes a commodity, and authors uh, of the article said that Agile for Teams started when the manifesto emerged and uh, so started spreading, but then it ended already, and uh, somewhere at 2010, and actually the point that your book caused the triggering of new waves, and uh, one of these waves is enterprise agility, and another bigger wave is a business agility. So what you are talking is definitely as a good example of the business agility, and so it looks like this wave uh, is just just growing, just emerging, and we only see it start. As I know, there were some movements related uh, to your book, and actually to you personally. I heard about Stu's event and uh, some. Uh, similar events. So does this mean that uh, there's a community of managers who base uh, on your ideas and they change the way of companies work? I mean in Europe at least what you see or maybe United States all over the world. Well it is true that there are lots of movements uh, out there. It is uh, uh, different people coming to the same conclusion whether you talk about uh, the Stoes movement that I have been uh, a part of a number of years ago. There's responsive organizations, there is conscious capitalism, there is uh, um, uh, democratic uh, companies, uh, there is uh, delivering for happiness. Uh, um, there's just five of dozens of such, uh, such new movements, which just shows that there is a need all over the world to, to, to change the way we run businesses. And some people focus a bit more on happiness. Some people focus a bit more on on, on other things, on organizational structure. But um, if you talk with people, you notice that they're very much aligned in, in, in their thinking, that businesses need to operate more like networks, like social networks, instead of hierarchies, uh, that it is very, very important that people are happy and engaged. Um, because uh, motivating them with money only works up to a certain point and then it doesn't work anymore. Um, so uh, lots of people come to the same conclusions. They use different words, that's fine. I use the word management 3.0 for, our, for all our materials that we are producing. Uh, there's workshops around it and uh, etc. But I'm totally fine with people using other terms uh, like teal organizations is a popular word in the last uh, year or so uh, based on another book by Frederick Laloux, which is also a great book. So it uh, doesn't matter to me. As long as people try to change their organizations, that is what I find important, and I'm trying to make a contribution to that.
Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's and great. And as we talk about contributions, talk, contribution, talk is one book, is one book, and you continue to another book, uh, book called it Workout. So the workout was a bit more practical. This was more like exercises, or at least uh, practical advice how to introduce techniques and uh, other aspects. Uh, so, uh, what causes this step from the management through zero as a general idea to the more practical workout? Well, the idea was I did a lot of workshops all over the world. I think maybe 150 or something. Uh, in many countries and what I noticed is that people appreciate that there is um, good theory behind ideas because that lends credibility that makes it believable but what they actually need is practices they want to know what can we start doing tomorrow on our team uh, it is great to know that there is some science proving that that this makes sense but they the, the most important for people most people is uh, give me some recipes uh, for for addressing the problems on my team tomorrow. So I thought, okay, that will be my uh, goal for the next book. Uh, create a book only with practical solutions, like delegation boards, kudo cards, merit money, uh, mo moving motivators, happiness door, etc., etc. A few dozen practices. Um, some of them I invented myself, uh, others I, I, I borrowed from other people or I, I synthesized ideas and turned them into one. Um, uh, so they came from different uh, directions but they all ended up in my book and uh, indeed the title was uh, Workout um, because the metaphor of the book was uh, workout exercises. It is good to have some exercises as a, as a management in an organization to make the organization healthier and I sold many copies of that book uh, it was self-published uh, and I sold it for about uh, for more than a year and then the publisher contacted me uh, Wiley in the United States and said um, uh, can we take over publishing that book and I said yeah sure <laughs> Uh, because they have a much bigger audience. So uh, it is being re-released now and the, the title will be Managing for Happiness. It is mostly the same book uh, but there are a number of differences like a few new chapters that I added and it will be out in June but it will still be all of it concrete management practices for people to start uh, the, next, uh, the next day. Uh. Uh, that's great that uh, you know, we are moving uh, and we are moving already to the new book so I, I wanted to have it a bit later as an announcement but thank you for introducing this. Go ahead. Um, just uh, maybe to encourage everyone who listen uh, at the moment uh, please ask questions. I have a few more questions but I, I'm going to run out of them so guys I rely on, on the community. And back to the uh, questions to you Jürgen. Uh, when you say that people want some practical stuff, they want a recipe, they want some pills like I can get it and make my organization better, what do you think, uh, is there any danger that uh, we oversimplify the complexity of the problem and so we oversimplify by giving them some small recipes but in the result they miss some general picture or at least they may miss some essential points. So how do you think uh, what could be a kind of uh, connection between small practices that I can apply tomorrow with my team actually some of my teams apply your practices even at the moment right now and what should be the essential points behind it that we still have to remember? Um, that's a complicated question so I'll try and do my best. Um, there is some, um, there are some complexity researchers um, uh, like uh, Russell Ackhoff for example, great, uh, very smart person uh, wrote a couple of very intelligent books um, who said that complex problems sometimes need very simple solutions and uh, a very complex problem for example is team motivation. Um, there are a lot of organizations where teams are not motivated, people are not happy in their jobs, 
um, uh, they don't feel engaged, uh, they just work 9 to 5, but try to do as little as possible. And uh, what do you do about that? That is a very complex problem. Well, an example of something very simple that I, ha that I have offered is a game called Moving Motivators. It is just 10 cards with 10 pictures on them and uh, 10 words, uh, um, uh, curiosity, honor, uh, uh, acceptance, mastery, purpose, and several other um, uh, um, intrinsic motivators of people. And then I simply ask people to put them in an order from unimportant to important and then move them up and down depending on how your motivation is affected by things that are happening in the organization. It's a very simple exercise, but it turns out that people love it. Why? Because it is much easier to talk about the things that motivate you and demotivate you when you have pictures uh, on cards and moving them around. It makes it tactile. It makes it makes it more concrete. It is very difficult to answer the question, uh, Tim, what motivates you in your job? This is a very difficult question to answer, right? But if you have some cards to move around, and then then you are asked to to uh, to think out loud with someone who's listening, makes it makes it much easier. So I think um, I'm trying to answer your question with an example. You have a very complex problem, team motivation. A very simple thing that you can do: move cards around and talk about the cards, and it turns out that this has a great effect. On, on, on people and teams. If you do, then do the same exercise with all the team members and you compare the results, you can see that different people are motivated by different things. Uh, what may motivate you is demotivating me. And the most important is to get people to talk about it. How do you get people to talk about these things? Well, that is, that is very hard, but it makes it easier to, to simply play a game. Yes, that's so, and that's the kind of stuff that I'm trying to do, Ad address complex problems sometimes with very simple solutions. So that sounds amazing. That sounds what, amazing. what I understand, that you, you're right, but uh, having some small practical, maybe facilitation kind of techniques, but that uh, triggers uh, action, some activities that lead to some change, and then the change uh, cause the uh, changing of the whole system. That sounds like amazing. And uh, as I know, this uh, new book, uh, Management for Happiness, it's not just uh, re republishing of workout. It's mostly redoing the book next edition or probably. So if you look back at the workout original set of exercises and then, of course, so some new exercises you're adding in the Management of Happiness, so you have a great pool of exercises, what are your favorite exercises? Because, for example, I have one of the favorites like uh, delegation poker and delegation board. So these seven level of delegations I've been introducing on some conferences, been talking a lot, using even in some workshops. So I definitely like this one out of many other good techniques. So what is your favorite set? Good question. Um, I would start with the same one. Uh, delegation levels and delegation poker because I think it is one of the most important, if not the most important one. Um, because uh, um, managing self, organizing teams, that is what everyone needs uh, uh, um, uh, to do better. And the delegation levels, turns out that it, this helps a lot of organizations to, to set clear boundaries on team uh, uh, um, the team self-organization. Um, and um, um, the, what I often explain is that the word management is from, from the word uh, managiare in, in Italian. It means leading horses. Uh, so managing an organization is like leading a horse. It's a great metaphor. Um, but if you have uh, a fully pure self-organizing team without any management, that would be like a wild horse. Uh, so that is not the kind of horse that I would like to work with, a wild horse. That's scary, right? So we need more than just self-organizing teams. We need a bit of, of management and leadership around it to define where are the fences uh, around the horses, up to where can they walk around freely. Um, so that is what delegation levels are, are about. 
The other practice that I personally like very much is, um, is Merit Money, which is peer-to-peer -peer crediting. That is an advanced practice. I do that with my team, where every team member has a number of points per month. We get rid of those points, we give them to each other throughout the month, and then uh, we accumulate points that we received from each other, and every now and then we convert those points to real money. So it is actual bonus money that we pay to each other. Uh, so there is no boss uh, uh, giving each other individual bonuses. Uh, I, as the CEO, only decide how much money is available, but I don't decide who gets it. That is what the team decides by crediting each other. And I like that very much because it is an example of delegating responsibilities to a crowd. Uh, quite often, crowds of people can make smarter decisions than, than managers. And I believe uh, the assessment of who did a great job, uh, who contributed the most to our results, that is a question that is best asked uh, uh, from the crowd instead of from, uh, from the managers. Uh, so, um, um, and I believe in the 21st century we will see many, many more things in organizations delegated to the employees as a social network. It is very similar to what you see happening with technologies such as Facebook and Uber and Airbnb and you name it. They are basically relatively small organizations that have delegated a lot of stuff to crowds of people and they're just managing the crowds. And that is, uh, that is what organizations are becoming as well, I'm quite sure. Um, uh, but does it mean that we need uh, an additional prerequisite? Because you say you already rely on self-organizing teams, so you rely on uh, community which is, uh, let's say, aligned, normed. But often uh, our managers, they face a situation when a project starts and a new group of people gather it together and then uh, often uh, it's a just challenge in general and um, is there any recommendations uh, like uh, maybe techniques or basics, uh, basic principles I have to always remember because uh, this way we actually can start the next uh, Uber or some company which could be small but then grow and become very successful but often as a consultant I see a chasm that companies have starting as a garage and then converting into an enterprise and definitely using your principle, having your book in hands, they can survive jumping over this chain. What you would recommend them as a bridge? I mean, for well, the teams as, and for the companies. Right, well, um, as a bridge, they should learn how to uh, um, how to get people to self-organize as teams and that is in many organizations that is uncommon that is not something that people are used to doing so that is where um, the, um, uh, the the delegation levels can be helpful because you can delegate in small steps it is not like just giving a couple of people a lot of work and telling them hey now it's your job uh, that is that is too far uh, you go a couple of steps too fast I think uh, you need to you may, maybe first uh, first step would be uh, well what is your opinion as a team what do you think I will make the decision as the manager but I would like you to to give me input that is a very safe way to get the team involved and it is respectful because you're asking them for their opinion um, and then in the next phase you could say okay well let's decide together me and the team uh, uh, we try to achieve consensus and if you have feel good about what is happening then, you can make the next step, like, okay, you decide now, but I will give you suggestions as the manager. You have to listen to me because I'm not a dumb person, so I'll give you suggestions. So this transition can be done in small steps, and I think that is uh, important for people, for managers to realize that it's not just throwing work across the fence and then expecting that people will be self-organizing uh, magically because they're not used to it. And uh, at the same time, people have to be motivated for doing a good job. Uh, I describe kudo cards in my book. It's a very simple practice. 
give each other uh, uh, thank you cards, tokens of appreciation uh, that you could even use to uh, for simple things like uh, winning prizes or something like you put all the cards in a box that people receive and at the end of the month one person uh, uh, wins uh, wins a dinner for two or a box of chocolates, whatever, it doesn't matter. The, the presents are, are, are a minor detail but they make it fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, this is what some companies achieve to get uh, teams uh, appreciate appreciate each other more. Uh, if uh, if the merit money, the bonus system is still too advanced, because that is like uh, advanced level, I would say, for self-organizing teams. If you're just getting started, start with an easy one. Uh, Kudo cards. Uh, uh, it would be a great uh, great suggestion. Yeah. Great. Great because actually this is one also one of my favorites and actually I introduced this in many organizations and uh, you referred uh, meaning of the role of the manager himself or herself and um, there's always debate especially in IT industry and in our country at least um, uh, should be the should should the manager be from uh, technicians from some field experience or should the manager be an educated person, a well-educated, uh, should it have a good, uh, I don't know, born leadership or uh, something that they can learn in, in the universities or from, from a trainer and from the book like your book. What do you think about this problem of the manager himself as a, one of the main uh, affecting uh, the whole uh, organization and the management concepts? I believe that um, uh, managers should manage the system and not the people. Uh, like, um, for example, uh, to use the metaphor again of uh, technologies, uh, I, I rent out my apartment in, in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, through Airbnb. And uh, I, I am one of many people on Airbnb renting out their apartments. Sometimes I use Airbnb to, uh, to find apartments. And this is all people in a large global crowd who find each other and, and work with each other. But the system needs to be managed. There is an organization there called Airbnb in San Francisco. They manage the system and they make sure that uh, they, they put things in place that try to make sure that people behave well, like uh, rating systems, uh, policies, um, um, technologies that make things easier to communicate with each other. They have a couple of rules, like uh, you cannot give each other phone numbers and uh, email addresses before you accept it your, uh, uh, the, 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 the payment uh, and the, the reservation. Um, so this is typically for me also how it will apply to organizations in the future. This is the role of management. You manage the system and then the people can do all the work together. But there have to be a couple of constraints, a couple of rules on the entire system. You need to have good technologies in place to support all the people. Uh, you have to make sure that you introduce things so that people behave well, so that they don't cheat on each other, that they that they uh, that you grow a good culture in uh, in the system, and that is the responsibility for management. I do not believe that managers should be primarily leaders. I think that's a bit of an old-fashioned uh, uh, approach. Um, they like hearing that. Traditional managers love hearing that they are the leaders of the organization, but it is all nonsense uh, because um, everyone, everyone in the crowd can become a leader. If you if you attract followers in on, on Twitter, you are a leader. It doesn't it doesn't mean doesn't mean that you are managing Twitter. I am not managing Twitter, <laughs> but I but I, ha I have plenty of followers on Twitter, which means that I am in some sense a leader on 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 Twitter. Uh, so the same applies to organizations. Everyone can be a leader in some area with other people following uh, her or him. Uh, but this entire system, almost like a, a little government, has to be managed somehow. And that is what managers are responsible for. And something that other people can contribute to as well. Like um, I give feedback to the managers of Airbnb or the managers of, of Uber or, or uh, Twitter or whatever because sometimes they need a little bit of help from the crowd. <laughs> uh, 
to, to make things better. And that is what everyone is responsible for. So that is why my book is not only for managers, it is also for everyone else in the organization because anyone can start a delegation board or kudu cards or, or whatever. You don't have to wait for the managers to start cleaning things up. That, that sounds quite powerful and tricky. So you don't need managers. That may scare someone. <laughs> and uh, you mentioned some companies already, and uh, probably they have read your books, and maybe you know some companies that for sure applied uh, your ideas, so like inviting you as an internal speaker or handle the workshop in the company, and then they made even some presentations like, oh, how did we apply uh, Jurgen's ideas? Do you know such companies? Um, I know there are plenty of companies using such ideas. The difficulty is the messages often do not arrive in my email box. Like, for example, um, I was at uh, an event uh, three weeks ago in Frankfurt uh, talking for a big uh, German uh, organization. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, I had two other events in, in Frankfurt. Uh, someone came to me and said, uh, Jürgen, I work for a small uh, uh, software company, about 100 people, and we have done everything in your book, and it is great. We have applied delegation boards and kudo cards and, 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 and moving motivators. We are even now thinking about changing the bonus system to earn money. I had never heard of them. I, had, I didn't know who that person was. I had never heard of that company uh, name. I already forgot the name, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, but they, showed, they told me then, because I was there, oh, by the way, we do everything in your book. But if I hadn't met that person, I would never have known. So this is difficult because the people don't email me to say, hey, Jurgen, we tried this practice and that practice at this company. They don't do that for some uh, reason. I really have to travel around and talk with people. Um, but yes, so it happens. This, this company is a relatively small company, has done everything in the book. Great. Usually organizations pick and choose. That is also my intention. You can do just one practice out of the entire book. Uh, it, it is like a recipe book for cooking. You can start in the middle. You can start at the back. It doesn't matter. Um, so I've been... Um, a company recently in in, um, uh, in Finland, for example, a bank, big Scandinavian bank, and they had just started with a couple of practices, very carefully, <laughs> uh, because it is a bank and it's a difficult uh, uh, environment for banks. Things are much easier for Google and Facebook because they have hardly any rules from governments, only about privacy usually, but other than that, there are very little rules. But for banks, there are a lot of rules from governments on how they need to operate. So it's much more difficult for banks to change. Um, and uh, but they started, and I believe they started with delegation boards, uh, which is which makes sense because it's an important one. So uh, yeah, I know uh, uh, plenty of companies are doing some things. Uh, there are very few people who do everything, but they exist as well. That's, that's great. So actually you just uh, inspired because uh, you inspired me and I hope our uh, audience who listen now are maybe going to visit your talk uh, during the conference in June. So uh, that means not only a small company, not only startups and small uh, enterprises, uh, but also big enterprises they can change. And, yeah, about banks in Ukraine, there are probably even more regulations as anywhere in the world. So definitely, they have a good message now, so they can try out something. And um, if we talk about your new book, uh, Managing for Happiness, and uh, as you mentioned it, as I probably already said, that it will contain new uh, chapters, it will contain new techniques, and that means actually no one uh, have read them yet. So Maybe a small teaser. What will be the new add-ons? Uh, what is you building on top of your experience at the moment, and you will include in your next edition of the book? Well, the the new chapters uh, are uh, in the new book are for moving motivators and happiness doors, which are not new practices. 
It is just that I had never actually written a chapter about those practices because moving motivators and happiness doors are not addressed in the workout book as it was uh, published last year. Um, so uh, I wrote uh, new materials for that. What I also did for every chapter, uh, I uh, added uh, pages with tips and tricks from uh, readers. So I get sometimes messages, uh, particularly at events or, or um, sometimes in my email box, people saying, well, we, we tried something like this or uh, we changed it like that. There are blog posts of people who have changed uh, uh, one of the practices to, to add another column on a delegation board or uh, use the moving motivators cards in a recruitment process that I never thought of, uh, things like that. So uh, I like those ideas because often the readers of my work have better ideas than I have. Uh, so uh, I, I've, I made sure that for every chapter I added um, such uh, tips and variations, uh, as I call them. Yeah, so that's the, thing, uh, that's the main thing that is new, two the tips and variations. And you skipped some uh, older chapters, right? Yes, yes, because the book had to be thinner. So I also had to take some chapters out. I actually asked the readers on my mailing list what were their most popular, uh, their most popular practices, and uh, I ordered them. And I made sure that the least popular, I removed those from the book. They will be available online for download for for all the readers, uh, but they will not be in the in the in the book as it published in June because the book had to be thin. It was too big. It was too heavy. Said the publisher. Yeah, no, no one likes reading uh, very uh, fat books. Um, exactly. As I understand, your book will be released after the conference, so it means for our listeners and participants, the only chance to get inspired is only to attend your talk. Maybe a short teaser of uh, what will be the topic and what we can get out from your talk uh, participating uh, on ITEM conference. Well, um, I will be giving insight in some of the practices, uh, particularly uh, from a, a happiness angle, because uh, that is the what changed with the book as well. I changed the title from Workout to Managing for Happiness, um, and uh, I um, I want to uh, uh, talk about that a little bit about the twelve steps to happiness. What is it that makes people happier in an organization? Um, and uh, I want to talk about uh, managing the system, not the people, uh, and um, uh, and a couple of other principles that are important, I believe, for uh, for managers. So um, it will be um, a sneak peek for people in Ukraine into what the book is about. Uh, and um, yeah, I look forward to meeting everyone there. Yeah, me too. I look forward to see you and actually read the book. So I, I already going to pre-order it. And um, maybe just uh, as a general uh, uh, recommendation to our participants, because many of them not managers yet, and uh, we have a good chance that we will grow up uh, really good project managers who grow with your book in hand, uh, and means uh, they will think a bit different, but. Uh, is there any a bit practical advice? Because as we said, uh, the workout is a set of practical small steps that they can practice. And uh, what steps or what maybe books to read uh, for the manager or want to be a manager person and achieve uh, success maybe as a person, as a manager? So you're asking what, what kind of books that people should read? Uh, yeah, what is your advice? What actually uh, maybe some steps and uh, of course learning and reading will be uh, included so then of course maybe some books uh, you recommend to read also. Mm -hmm. Well, um, reading is usually what I always advise. There's, there's too little reading going on among managers, uh, I find. Uh, I sometimes ask them uh, how many know about this method or that practice or, or this guru or that book and then very few hands go up, which is so sad because I learned so much 
just from reading other people's books, uh, and that helped me a lot being a better manager in, in my organizations. Uh, so uh, books that I can recommend, uh, well, one of them is, I already mentioned it, by Frederick Lalu, uh, Reinventing Organizations. It is a great book because it has examples of, of, of concrete businesses, companies around the world that organize things in a very different way. And the nice thing, most of them not IT businesses like uh, one uh, in, in the Netherlands, in my uh, uh, country, home country, um, uh, in healthcare uh, company that is providing uh, nursery uh, and, and, and care for uh, sick and elderly people in, 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 in cities. And uh, they, they only consist of self-organizing teams. They basically have little or no management. Uh, and, and the self-organizing teams do everything. And it works great. The, the company has grown tremendously fast. So uh, this is one of the examples in that in that book. Um, another book that I can recommend is uh, Creativity Inc. by uh, Ed Catmull, which is a book about Pixar Animation Studios. Um, if uh, when I read the book from beginning to start, uh, from start to end, I mean, uh, I thought, well, this is a typical management 3.0 company. And probably they have never heard of Management 3.0 at Pixar, but it doesn't matter because they do what I suggest that everyone else should be doing. <laughs> like they don't have job titles, for example. <laughs> they, they find job titles stupid and unimportant. They don't do that stuff. It's, they are hundreds of people, and they are able to work without job titles. So that is proof that it is, that it is possible. Um, and they have other great uh, practices uh, that enable that company to have the most amazing uh, animated uh, movies that they uh, have created. All of them are blockbuster uh, hits. So the, the book describes how it is possible for them to have a culture of high, very high quality of, of movies and, uh, and, and, and uh, innovation as well and a lot of happiness of the people who are working there so a very inspiring book uh, start with those two and that's uh, that will be my suggestion <laughs> that's that's great so actually I just realized that uh, time flies so fast we're already talking almost an hour and uh, luckily we have answered uh, several questions from the audience and uh, actually guys you have the last chance to ask a question or maybe two and uh, maybe the last question from my side, um, because I know you're also tired, you are actually in the United States now and you have time difference. <laughs> yeah, so again, thank you for joining for the interview, even with this, all this uh, preparation needed. And uh, just a question uh, I have to ask if we're trending from the past through the present to the future. How do you see uh, the trend of, uh, okay, let's say IT, uh, uh, IT industry management, but then of course, as you mentioned, it, uh, your idea is spreading across IT, so let's say even bigger management. How do you see it, where it will go, where it may go in next five years or maybe ten years if you can forecast this or at least imagine? Um, I think I've, I've already um, indicated where I think things will go be going. I believe that organizations will uh, become uh, similar to what, what Facebook and Airbnb and Uber and those kinds of uh, organizations, companies do with their, with their customers, their businesses. They manage crowds. And that is what we should become good at in organizations. We should be the managers, the, the, the herding, herding uh, uh, cats almost, because everyone is difficult, uh, have their own opinions, and, and, and wants to go another direction. But we should figure out how to make people productive collaboratively and, and keep them happy while not giving every person instructions on, on what to do and how. So uh, there are some some uh, rules, of course. Um, another one, another example is TED. Uh, TED is extremely popular uh, organization with their uh, TED talks. Uh, most of those talks are are organized by volunteers at at uh, 
uh, TEDx events all around the world, but TED has a couple of rules, a number of constraints that you have to uh, adhere to as a local organizer. But they are very inspiring in, in how they organize that entire ecosystem, and they have grown very fast. So that, I believe, is the kind of management that we will see in, in the future within organizations. The management layers will become, uh, become smaller. It will be a smaller circle of people who are only managing the system and not the people. The people, they can manage each other. They can, they can organize things uh, with, with each other. So uh, that is the future, but it's going to take a while, I'm sure. So oh, definitely, definitely, I want uh, uh, I want to see when it comes uh, because uh, sometimes when you face the current reality, you still may think that it's a long way to go. But what you said during the interview and in your books and uh, your posts that it's already changing, and that's great. So uh, over the time I know you, you are, you already changed the world, and that's. That's great. So I, I really wish you to keep changing it, and I, I'm looking to see you uh, alive uh, in, in Dnipropetrovsk. And now I think uh, I have to switch uh, to Olga because, as I understand, we expect to do some announcements and probably even uh, some uh, uh, raffle to make a winner who can get some discounts or tickets. So Olga. Um, hello, everybody again. Uh, Timofey, Jurgen, thank you very much for this fruitful dialogue. It was very live, I would say, live interview in live mode. <laughs> uh, that's great. I'm very inspired to see you, Jurgen, here in Nepropetrovsk uh, in June and to be able uh, to talk to you personally, to listen to your speech. Uh, and um, I'm sure that everybody uh, are really now very motivated and looking forward to buy your book that comes in June. So we are making pre-booking on Amazon. <laughs> um, Fey, thank you very much for your uh, questions. They were very smart and very pointful. Um, me as a manager personally uh, that manage IT teams, IT products, was really inspired uh, about your questions because that's exactly what I ask myself every day. <laughs> so let me now switch to Russian again. Ну что, господа, спасибо всем большое за то, что вы послушали интервью за то, что вы задавали свои вопросы э, по теме джайла, по теме менеджмента, по теме управления людьми. Меня лично очень впечатлили э, ответы, что нужно управлять системой, <laughs> а люди умеют управлять друг другом и сами собой. Это фантастический инсайт для меня самой. Э, и э, я хочу напомнить, что... Э, Юрген будет выступать на конференции 3 июня в потоке Project Management, который как раз будет модерировать Тимофей Евграшин. Также хотела бы сказать, что в целом на конференции ITEM у нас будет более 30 спикеров, в том числе из различных стран Европы. Мы будем освещать темы как project management, а также и управление IT-бизнесом, маркетинг и продажи в IT-сфере и самые последние трендовые технологии, которые находятся на пике 2016 года. Для тех, кто смог с нами быть до конца сегодняшней интервью-сессии, Хорошая новость заключается в том, что э, специально для вас мы приготовили промокод на э, скидку, э, которая будет действовать сегодня до 12.00, э, до полуночи. Вы можете ей воспользоваться для того, чтобы э, приобрести билет на конференцию ITEM со скидкой 7%. Э, промокод будет выслан вам на электронный ящик. В целом он будет 
как раз звучать как Юрген Апелла 0704, то есть имя, фамилия нашего уважаемого спикера и сегодняшняя дата. Ну что ж, до встречи на конференции Айтем 2-3 июня. Также обязательно присоединяйтесь к вебинару, точнее к воркшопу, который будет проводить Тимофей Евграшин 1 июня на предконференц-дне, который будет посвящен практическим тренингам. Всем спасибо за внимание, спасибо за уделенное время и до встречи на Айтем 2016. Thank you, Jürgen. Thank, Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Olga. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.